All right, hello. Uh, it is time to talk once again about crime. Now, obviously, I really don't want to talk about it as much as I used to, but there are a number of things that, that have been going on that really have to be talking about. And if there is something major that, that happened, especially something that it, it is close to where I live or a place I frequent, I'm going to talk about it here. Uh, and uh, something happened in Deer Park, again, uh, Deer Park's having a lot of issues and it's very concerning. So there was a shooting. Uh, he shot uh, 18, a 12 year old girl was shot by a pellet gun from a passing car at Tanger Outlets in Deer Park. So this is not too far from obviously Edgewood Preserve. Uh, and if you know where uh, new at noon, a 12 year old now we're I only spent 24 seconds on. All right, we'll have to play the news 12 video for you. Uh, but um, it happened right over here in Deer Park. So um, this is Edgewood Preserve right here. And this is Tanger Outlets right here. So literally right on the other side of the tracks. And this is a place I go to a lot, you know, to change buses or walk around. It's actually a pretty nice little shopping area there. But they're bringing the, cr they're bringing the crime in there. Uh, so let's uh, play the video from uh, Channel 12 right now. Uh, and uh, at least they did a good job. A girl was wounded this. in a drive-by shooting after someone opened fire with a pellet gun. As you see, it was captured on, on surveillance video, video when uh, it happened this afternoon at the Tanger Mall in Deer Park. News 12's Christopher King is there with a reaction from shoppers. It happened right here. Police say a 12-year-old girl was walking through the parking lot of the Tanger That's Mall right where the bus when comes someone out. drove by and opened fire. It's actually scary. Shoppers can't believe it. This should not be happening anywhere, especially here on Long Island. Suffolk County police say someone in a car oh, used reform. a pellet gun <laughs> to shoot a 12-year-old girl here at the Tanger Mall in Deer Park. There are pellet guns and they're, they're you know, just around here is, is a problem for me. So. It happened just before 5.30 Monday afternoon. Police say the shooter opened fire with what they call an airsoft gun. I'm here with my kids. We're trying to spend like a nice day and... The fact that you just said that to me makes me think twice about even being here. Deanna Diaz shops here with her daughters. Now let me just let me just pause that for a moment. See, she's thinking twice about it, and this is the concern. Obviously, I'm just going to inform you of it because, I, like I said, I, we know this time they're trying to ruin the middle of the island. We know that already, and she's afraid to go there. I guess where she's going to probably want to go instead, the South Shore. Uh, and this is the problem that you don't see stuff like this happening in Babylon or Rockville Center. Or Belmore, no, it's always in the middle of the island, uh, and this crap has got to stop. And you know, it's, you know, the South Shore is not going to be sustainable. What happens when the hurricane hits and the South Shore is gone? Then what? Worries about their safety. Teenagers should be able to come here and be, you know, in the mall and be able to just, you know, walk around and and feel safe. You know, we should all be able to feel safe. A short exactly. time later, police say the same car was involved in another pellet gun shooting on Deer Park Avenue in North Babylon. This shouldn't be happening. Take a look at this video. Someone takes a shot from a dark car. The victim winces as the shooter opens fire. I'm walking through the parking lot now. Do I have to worry that's about stuff like that? That's not by Tanger, that video, though. Obviously, I do. That's, that's the Deer girl Park in the Avenue first North incident Babylon. here at the mall was taken to a local hospital. She's expected to be OK. No one was injured in the second incident. Police believe the car involved is a dark-colored Hyundai Elantra, and they believe three guys were in that car. Please call Crime Stoppers if you have any info on this shooting. That number is 1-800-220-TIPS. In Deer Park, Christopher King, News 12. So I'll show you where it happened on the map. Um, happened right here. This is where the shooting happened. Right here. Um, right in this spot. And the bus... The bus I think it happened during broad, day broad daylight, too. So, again, this is where it happened, right here. Um, you know, too many criminals on the roads here. You know, um, police need to be stopping. That's obviously a suspicious. Hey, there's the bus right there. Uh, but it's obviously a suspicious vehicle. The police should stop, question, and frisk the drivers. Yeah, we need that all over the place. And, uh, you know, it's uh, got to get these criminals off the streets. Uh, so the other shoe, the other... I know it's a, just a pellet gun, but it could have just been a could have been a real gun too. You know, a pellet gun can still hurt you. So you know, the girl was hospitalized. So the other thing happened. I don't know exactly where. It almost looked like this spot, right over here. Um, let's see. Let's see where the other spot was. They show it in the 
in the video there. I'm going to kind of go back here and find where that was. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find where that is. I want to see where that is. All right, that's uh, that's not by Tanger. Uh, I think I know where that is. All right, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings there. So uh, let's see. All we got to do is find Buffalo Wild Wings, and we should be able to find it. Let's see. I think it's over here. Let's see if we can find Buffalo. I'll just put it in here. Buffalo Wild Wings, Deer Park Avenue. Okay, so it happened over here. Right over here. There's almost like a, a lot of, like a lot of fast food restaurants over here. They're missing an Arby's and I, I would really like to see a Roy Rogers, but uh we're getting all traffic or track. This is where it happened right here. So here's Buffalo Wild Wings. This is where it happened. There's a Southern State Parkway. Um There's too many too many problems being dumped out there, you know? Too many problems. So uh, let's get to the next crime that we got to talk about here. Uh, that again, very disturbing uh, to hear about that. Uh, very disturbing. They have it on here too. Uh, we have another issue here that happened. Uh, Channel Twelve did not cover officer hospitalized on Long Island by combative subject. This happened in Elmont. So a police officer on Long Island was injured while dealing with with a combative suspect who was taken into custody during an investigation into a domestic dispute. Officers from the Nassau County Police Department responded to an Elmont apartment at approximately 6 p.m. on Saturday, February 19th, where there was a report of a domestic disturbance involving a man and his 23-year-old girlfriend. According to detectives, Bronx resident Gary Henriquez, age 33, was involved in an argument with his girlfriend during which he allegedly punched her several times in the face, causing injuries and substantial pain. Police said that on upon, upon arrival, officers attempted to place Henriquez into handcuffs at which point, all right, stop being distracted. I, you know, these ads are annoying. Uh, you know why I'm distracted. Uh, into handcuffs, at which point he became combative and resisted arrest, e e though, even though he was apprehended after a brief struggle. While in police custody, investigators said that Henriquez continued to struggle with the officers, leaving one with an injury to his right knee. The officer and woman involved in the disturbance were both transported to an area hospital for treatment. Henriquez was charged with two counts of second-degree assault, obstructing governmental administration and resisting arrest. He was arraigned at first district court in Hempstead on Sunday, February 20th, and scheduled to make a later court appearance at a later date. So I wonder if he was let out. Sounds like he might have been let out. So that's the problem with bail reform right there. Uh, it doesn't say, but I bet he was. I bet he was. Uh, we got a hit and run crash here. Suspect nabbed after man's leg severed and hit and run crash. Channel 12 spent a few minutes on this. This happened also in Elmont. A driver has been accused of leaving the scene of a crash that left a man critically injured on Long Island. The crash happened at 8.45 p.m. Sunday, February 20th in Elmont. A 65-year-old man, while attempting to cross Linden Boulevard at 237th Street, was struck by a 2015 Hino flatbed tow truck traveling eastbound that fled the scene. The man suffered a serious injury to his left leg, which was severed below his knee. Responding officers immediately rendered life-saving aid by applying tourniquets to control the bleeding. The victim was transported to a local hospital, hospital where he was in critical but stable condition. An investigation was conducted, and the operator of the vehicle, Abraham Elfigi, of age 20 of Queens, was located and arrested without incident. Elfigi Elfqui has been charged with leaving the scene of an auto accident with serious injury. He's due to be arraigned Monday, February 21st, and 1st, at first is court in Hempstead again. Uh, we don't know if he was let out or not. Um, and then we have other incidents that they didn't even report on here, uh, which are kind of interesting here. Now, not even on here. we got to go to Laura Uli for these. And uh, it says, prisoner escaped in Nassau County. I don't know. This never made the news. The NCPD reported a prisoner escaped from the Nassau County prison. This is the juvenile detention center in Westbury. It happened around 1.30 p.m. Heavy task force on the search for the subject. Old Country Road is delayed with traffic due to a search. Reported, uh, reported the suspect stole a vehicle from the Westbury car dealership and took off with a 2018 Black Infinity Q50 with no plates. 
Chopper and K9 are also searching. It's an ongoing investigation this is from yesterday. We don't know what happened with that. We don't know. Then there were shots fired at Valley Stream. I don't ever go. A lot of things the news is not even reporting, which is why I have to report it because it's kind of my duty to just tell you what's going on. So police closed off West Valley Stream Boulevard and Union Street, reporting multiple uh, shots fired. This is in Valley Stream. It happened around 3 p.m. Reported shots were fired toward a home. Three suspects took off, suspects took off in a vehicle. An ongoing investigation. And then there were a bunch of shootings in Queens, St. Albans, uh, the robbery spree. Uh, there was a robbery spree and one, and there was a robbery in Merrick. An 18T store was robbed at gunpoint, 186 Merrick Road. Three females are the subjects. Uh, so they're going to have to keep an eye on this. Again, I don't have anything on this for pedestrian struck in Glendale. Uh, pedestrian struck uh, by vehicle died in Hicksville in another unstable condition from a Bellrose hit and run. So a pedestrian was hit in Hicksville. Uh, male shot dead in Jamaica. Uh, subject wanted for stealing a vehicle with a kid inside and a violent night in Queens within three hours a male shot dead in St. Albans uh, and then more shoot, shot, shots fired in Jamaica and Elmhurst so those three shootings there in Queens uh, just unbelievable what's going on the crime does continue <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable how this is all so yeah you can't even find anything if I search Valley Stream here Valley Stream and see if there's anything on that shooting. There probably isn't. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, again, really just uh, what's going on here? You know, I mean, it's just a cover-up with the news. It's it's unbelievable. It really is. There's a lot of things that are just covered up and that people just don't want to talk about. Uh, they don't want to talk about. So, uh, we have this incident happened on the Long Island Railroad. Uh, a man was lying on the tracks, and he was hit and killed by a Long Island Railroad train. I didn't even hear about this until now. Police are investigating after a person was hit by an LAWR train delaying service for commuters. This happened this morning, 7 a.m., east of Forest Hills by a Hempstead Branch train. According to the NYPD, the man was seen lying on the roadbed as the train pulled into Forest Hills, Queens. The, modem, the motorman, no, they're called engineers on the Long Island Railroad, but <laughs> he saw but could not stop in time. And what a horrible thing for the engineer to go through having to know that there's nothing you can do you try everything you can and uh the victim unfortunately died at the scene probably an attempted suicide the man has not been well, attempted unfortunately successful suicide uh the man had not been identified pending notification of kin uh there's no criminality the suspected the forest hill station is an elevated platform so this must have affected the long island railroad fairly uh quite a bit this morning let's uh, see uh, what the, how the railroad was affected by this because it could it could have really caused uh, a lot of problems this morning. We're gonna have to go back to uh, let's see. Yeah, there was a police investigation. I don't know if service was completely suspended or they just ran it on the other side. Uh, let's see. Looks like they have a bunch of trains being diverted and some some late. Let's see. Uh. Let's see, there wasn't a full service suspension. I guess not. I don't see anything about a full service suspension. They did some cancellations and diversions. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes both directions. Some trains will be canceled. Uh, so, actually did wind up can uh, suspending eastbound service for a while. Um, so, they kept, they kept trying to run service, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it's a tragic thing. And this happens just way too often. And... Nobody seems to, you know, view it as a priority that we need to deal with this. Uh, it's a crisis. All these people are just going through these mental health crises, and there's not enough help for them. And you only hear is a bunch of talk about it, but nobody actually ever does anything about it. Uh, it's horrible. Uh, trio st accused of stealing more than 10,000 merchandise from Long Island stores. Uh, and these three people are facing charges after police said they stole more than $10,000 worth of merchandise from Long Island stores, Rodney Gallery, a Gallery, age 53, of Westbury, Michelle Brown, age 24, of Baldwin, and Willie White, age 55, of Hempstead, were arrested at 10 at 1:45 p.m. Monday, February 21st, according to the Nassau County Police. Investigators saw a gray 2002 Nissan Maxima identified as the subject vehicle traveling east on Fulton Street at Cathedral Avenue in Hempstead. Police pulled the Nissan over and arrested the three defendants without incident. 
On January 5th, 8th, 10th, 19th, 22nd, and 31st, the defendants took merchandise from Marshalls located at 345 Rockaway Turnpike in Lawrence. NCPD said the stolen merchandise was worth a total of $8,200. The defendants stole merchandise, and, and on February 21st, the defendants stole merchandise valued at $2,028 from the Marshalls located at 600 Hempstead Turnpike in Elmont. Charged with four counts of grand larceny, fourth degree grand, attempted grand larceny, fourth degree criminal possession of stolen property. That's what Gallery was charged with. Brown was charged with two counts of third degree grand larceny, fourth degree, degree attempted grand larceny, and fourth degree criminal possession of stolen property. The three de- defendants were arraigned on February 22nd. Uh, it doesn't say if they were let out, but I have a feeling they were. And uh, uh, actually, they might have it on heel. Let's see. If they got uh, an on here. Oh, we have another one here. Uh, arrest in Hicksville. Eighth Squad detectives report the arrest of a Farmingdale man for incident that occurred on Sunday, February 20, 20th, 2022, at 1 15 p.m. in Hicksville. According to detectives, Salvatore M. Alani, age 26, of 114 Motor Avenue, became involved in a dismiss- domestic dispute with his girlfriend, 30, at 828 South Oyster Bay Road. As a result of the disturbance, the female victim suffered several abrasions to the right side of her neck and called police upon police arrival. Officers were determined informed that Alani was intoxicated and broke a flat screen television before fleeing the scene. Responding officers eventually located him a short distance away. As officers attempted to place Alani in custody, he became combative, refusing to comply with verbal commands and spit in an officer's face. After resisting arrest, Alani was eventually taken into custody. The defendant, while acting in a manner that was harmful to himself and others, was transported to a local hospital for treatment. A subsequent investigation by officers revealed that he was in violation of a protective or stay-away order from his girlfriend. As a result of this altercation, two police officers suffered injuries and were treated at a local hospital. The female victim refused medical attention at the scene. Defendant Alani is charged with two counts of assault, second-degree criminal contempt, first-degree criminal contempt, second-degree criminal mischief, fourth-degree harassment, second-degree disorderly conduct, obstructing governmental administration, second-degree and resisting arrest. He will be arraigned when medical pra- medically practical, and, of course, we don't know if he was let out or not, but, uh, you know, these are the kind of cases where people are let out under the bail reform law, which the governor and the powers that be uh, that run uh, that are in the state legislature just don't want to. I'm still going to keep talking about this because we are in election year and people need to be aware that those who don't want to change bail reform need to be voted out. Um, that's the bottom line. And I think that if they keep this up, the Democrats in the state will be driven out of office in November. Uh, that's, 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 that's my own opinion of it. That is. Um, well, let's see. Oh, we had a robber here at Flower Hill. All right, so we had a bank robber here in Flower Hill here as well. All right, let's go. All right, that is... Did we, uh, where did it go? Where did it go here? My computer's acting a little weird here. What's going on? That's not what I want. All right, let's get back to the story that we want. Computer's acting slow again. Here we go again with the spinning circle. So annoying. Why does this keep happening? It's, uh, just, you know, I'm supposed to have Fios internet here. Why is this being so slow? That's why I like to open it, link in new tabs, so I can easily go back in case a page gets stuck. Uh, so let's go to this robbery here in Flower Hill. Look, it's not even showing up on the screen. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on with this thing? Oh, my God. It's it's just being really slow all of a sudden. All right, let's try this. I do apologize for that. So robbery, Flower Hill, Saturday, February 19th, 1.59 p.m., Citibank at 1075 Northern Boulevard. Subject approached the teller and presented her with a note demanding money while displaying a gun. The teller complied and the subject fled west on foot through the bank parking lot with an undisclosed amount of U.S. currency. There were eight employees and no customers inside the bank at the time. Male black, six foot tall. Subject wearing a light colored hooded jacket, black pants, black gloves, and a black face mask. Another bank robbery there. And then, uh, did we read this one already? Oh, this is the one with the headlight out, right? Uh, I don't know if I read this one. Um, 
Yeah, no, we already read this one from the last time. Um, so, yeah, we already read that one from the last time. Uh, but all these things happened, though, most of them happened in the middle of the island or on the North Shore and very few. We, we got some arrests in Hempstead here. Let's see if this was the same thing. I think this is the same thing we already read. Those three people that were, nope, this is something else. This is something else. So these people were arrested here. Uh, Four Squad reports the arrest of these individuals Monday, February 22nd, 1.45 p.m. in Hempstead. Oh, yeah, no, this is the one. Uh, yeah, this is these are the people here. Though. This is the uh, shoplifting arrests. Those pictures are clearer than in the um, Daily Voice article. But uh, there you go, just some of the crime going on. It feels like I'm leaving something out. Um I'm just going to go back to the Laura Uli because it seems like I am leaving something out. It was a bank robbery in Hillside Avenue. It was in Queens. Uh, another male robbed his vehicle in Auburndale. <laughs> armed robbery on Main Street in Flushing. Yeah, Flushing seeing armed robberies too. Dwayne Reed. Uh, unbelievable. And it was a bank robbery in Baldwin as well. So uh, the male subject fled on a BM BMX bicycle. So... Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, the crime is out. It's just, it's just out of, it's out of control, man. <laughs> you know, and it's the middle of the island that's dealing with the brunt of it. Though the South Shore isn't completely safe, but you know, um, yeah, you know what's going on. You know, they're, you know, they're, and that's, uh, I'm, I'm not saying the plan doesn't exist. It's still going, but you know, uh, this is the last place I can live in on Long Island. If I, if Mineola goes bad, I'm going to have to move to New Jersey because honestly. I don't really want to be anywhere else on Long Island, you know. Uh, the South Shore, I'm not allowed to live there. And a bunch of certain demographic, and it's going to get flooded by a hurricane. So, you know, um, you know, they just got to stop dumping these criminals out. It's up to you. That's why, I make the, that's why I'm making this video, even though I really don't want to, because it's up to you on Election Day to tell these people who won't change bail reform, you're out of here. You're fired. That's it. You're fired, Governor Hochul. You're fired, Andrea Stewart-Cousins. You're fired, uh... Carl Heasty, uh, you're all fired, you know. Um, anyone who won't force bail reform, I won't fix bail reform, needs to be out of there, all right, bottom line. Once we round up these criminals, uh, we're going to make our states safe. Our states. Did I just, <laughs> that's a tongue twister. <laughs> Once these criminals are off the streets, we can make our state safe again. And we don't have to deal with these criminals on our streets, particularly in uh, and around Deer Park, which really pisses me off because that's where the Pine Barrens are. And, you know, uh, while well, everybody's sitting safe in Babylon Village and uh, and the criminals get dumped loose here now. Uh, we got to get these criminals off the streets. Uh, that's it. Just round them up, get them off the streets, stop questioning the frisk. Somebody's up to no good, you know, uh, you know, throw them in jail. That's it. You know, if they're up to no good, you, you, you stop, you question. Chances are they, they, have, well, they have warrants. They have a record. They're violent. Just lock them up, you know. Get them off the streets um, so the rest of us can be safe. Because, a lot of, you know, a lot of most of the big shopping centers are in the middle of the island, including Tangara. I don't want to see this become dangerous and then people are afraid to go there. I mean, come on. It's a nice little, uh, I'll show you some pictures here if you haven't seen what it looks like inside here. Let's see if we can show you what it looks like here. So, here you go. This is a nice... Uh, Nice uh, little shopping center here. We don't want to see uh, the crime come here. No. we got to get these criminals off the streets. Governor Hochul, if you won't do it, we're going to fire you. That's it. We're going to fire you in November. As uh, the former president would say, you're fired, Governor. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.